Hello YouTube, this is IDNO. Uh, I'm just doing a quick, uh, I guess, tutorial video for Reddit user Artifacts Z. Uh, so he asked me to uh, kind of explain HDRIs uh, in general and um, in depth, I guess, um, to give him an idea of how to use them. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that's all he wanted, but I'm gonna go ahead and just go a little bit deeper than that and explain what they are how they work and uh, show off the benefits of using them. So uh, there was this was in reference to a post that somebody made uh, regarding uh, their first image that they the first render they did and it was a I think a wine glass uh, in front of a brown screen and it didn't have a whole lot of lighting um, and overall uh, it looks like it could have used a little bit more in terms of lighting and I suggested using HDRI images. I mean it was good it was a very good first attempt you know but. Um, that being said, so I, I went ahead and threw together the scene here. It's got a diamond, a ruby, and a, a yellow star um, that is uh, basically just uh, a test scene, I guess. Uh, not a very good test scene, mind you, but still. Um, and this is kind of just to approximate the lighting that, you know, the op in that had. Um, you know, very basic. Uh, the reflections look nice. Um, not a lot of lighting. It could definitely use a lot more. And um, overall, is not um, just not too catching to the eye, it's uh, kind of a boring render. Um, but the refractions are nice, which is, you know, I'm, I'm assuming what uh, what the original poster was, was attempting, was refractions. So, I mean, you can kind of counter this with uh, maybe changing the lighting a little bit here, uh, bump this up, maybe increase the strength, add in like a, a lamp to maybe give some more hard shadows, um, like a sun lamp right, right there. And, uh, and it does help, you know. It, it helps with the uh, with the overall scene. It makes it more pleasing to the eye. Um, but it's kind of still lacking, in my opinion. Um, and that's that's really where HDRI images come into it. You can use, I mean, the benefit to them is that I mean, it doesn't have to use be HDR images. It can be JPEG files. So you don't actually have to have an actual authentic file like that. So if your computer's struggling to to use those, you can use the smaller resolution or smaller uh, file type files and it'll work just fine for the most part so to use them um, let's go ahead and create a new world scene here this is uh, the world tab right here in uh, in the cycles rendering in engine um, I don't really use the uh, blender internal anymore uh, but yeah so you'll probably see a scene similar to this it might say um, just to have like a color right here and then it'll say use nodes uh, if you do see that go ahead and just click on use nodes it'll bump this to surface type background with color strength and everything and uh, yeah so the default is like a dark gray um, you're gonna want to go ahead and select environment texture really quick I, I want to touch on this uh, this is sky texture it's built into blender and it's actually I mean it's really really cool in that it kind of emulates using a uh, environment texture um, but it's completely dynamic and you can change uh, aspects of the whole thing to make it more to your to your liking I don't personally use it a whole lot because it's it is um, I mean it's procedural but it's entirely it's not it doesn't look authentic when you're uh, when you have scenes with skies and it doesn't really have clouds or anything like that so um, there's just a lot that's missing from it when used so um, but it is really cool. So, like, if you want a night, you know, nighttime scene and everything, it's uh, you know, you're able to kind of provide that for what you're trying to do. Um, I mean, it has a little bit of a sun, uh, just in the form of a lighter area in the scene. Um, I think if you lower the turbidity or raise it or something, yeah, there we go. So, raise the turbidity, you get more of a uh, a sun, um, and then you know, that can be moved around, and it just yeah, it, it it's nice. I like it. So. This is, um, like I said, I don't use this very much, but you can if you want to. So um, let me actually bump this up a bit, help with the fireflies a little bit. So, um, all right. So environment texture is the one you're going to want to use. This is the default. Hey, Blender was unable to find your texture pink that happens. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just select a. Not that. Don't know why they were in there. A basic one. Uh, say we're in a mall or something. Um, 
so I mean, almost immediately, you get some crazy reflections in these things. And I mean, personally, I feel like those reflections are what sells a scene for me. Uh, there we go. And makes it more believable. I mean, granted that the models themselves are very basic. They don't, nothing really has that hard of an edge. So you would have more of a bevel to it. And you might see, you know, uh, a, the, a, an actual surface that it'd be sitting on, like a table or something. And that would make the scene much more believable. You know, something that isn't so manufactured. Okay. So right away, your reflections and refractions increase and improve dramatically. Um, and also the lighting is a little bit better as well. Um, this isn't a true HDRI image. I used a JPEG for this, I believe. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so it's a JPEG image, and um, so you're not really getting the benefit uh, of that too much. But that being said, so I do have, uh, I've preloaded a few things in here to kind of show off what you can do with this um, and the kind of benefits you get from using your... Um, using an HDRI image and an environment scene or environment image. So um, just to kind of show you here, we have a kind of a low resolution version. Um, and this is an outdoor scene. Now, keep in mind, uh, so let me get rid of the lamp portion of the scene so it's not uh, adding to it. So this lighting here is almost in, it is entirely being projected by the, the environment. Um, there's no lamps in this scene here. You can look around and see that there's three uh, or four objects include well five objects including the, the uh, camera so there's nothing here projecting any light on these things but they're still being lit as if there was a sun lamp in there um, and that right there is the benefit of using an HDRI environment map um, it's it stands for high dynamic range imaging and it, it basically what it does is it captures light level values as well as color values. So as bright as something is and its color is what's captured and that's stored in, um, in values other than just the image. So you can actually view an HDRI image in an image editing program. It'll just look like a picture, but it's gonna have more of a, um, you've, you've seen pictures of it and it's kind of like a, they look weird, kind of muddy. Um, in this, the background looks normal because you know Minecraft, or <laughs> Blender is designed to, to display them properly, but um, in this one, this is just a simple environment here. You've got uh, a grassy meadow on a hill with rocks and you know a nice big sun right there. And that sun is actually what's providing the light. Um, the, the, the rays are being cast by that. Um, I don't know a whole lot about how Blender does that, but you know, yeah. So I mean, it is, it is really, really cool to see that uh, almost immediately better lighting better environment um and by the way i did i did purchase this these environment packs uh, i think it was like 30 bucks something like that but well worth the purchase especially when you can do other things with it i mean say you have like a you know a model that you worked on so you you went ahead and modeled a nice suzanne head that you wanted to show off to your to your friends and you were really proud of it so um, this is just a basic you know primitive that i've added with uh, a subsurface modifier and made it set to smooth and then gave it a basic uh, physically based uh, shader, um, I guess color, uh, uh, material, sorry. Um, there, physical base render. So, um, you know, outright, you get some awesome reflections, you know, um, and they're, they're not, they're not really strong, which is the important part. They're, they're subtle, they're there, and they just help to kind of make it seem like it's actually in an environment that is real. You know, you've got the, along the eye right here, you've got the stretching of the sun right here, and, you know, throughout here, you've got the reflection of the sky kind of here on his dome, on, I guess, Suzanne's dome. Um, really strong reflection on the eyebrow. Very, very nice, clean lines, and everything just, it just helps bring it to life, not to mention the fact that there's shadows and everything soft and hard being cast. Very nice. I, I really I love what it can do for a showcase model. Um, the really cool thing about the ones that I purchased, and this is kind of an aside, is the fact that they have separated the tone mapping, which is what's displayed in the background, with the actual lighting section. So if you want to, I went ahead and just threw this one together right here. If you want to, you can actually separate them completely 
So you still get all the lighting and the really cool effects, but you don't have to worry about, um, you know, distracting from your really epic model. Um, and I mean, just to kind of showcase the difference here uh, between a basic scene without a um, HDR image and what we've done here. So this is the one that we created earlier. And again, very, very nice reflections. I love the way it looks. I would suggest throwing in a lamp just to kind of give it a little lighting. But yeah, you know, it's up to you. Tons of reflections, this one kind of noisy um, and kind of overall distracting from the scene. So again, you can use JPEGs. I wouldn't really do it personally. Um, and then if you want to go to a basic scene, drop out that lighting here, go to the basic one without any kind of reflections and I mean you, you get self reflections which are nice but overall it's just it's lacking personally um, and you might want something like this throw the lamp in um, you might some you might want to showcase your model like this to where it's it's basic you know there's not a whole lot going on and it's not distracting um, but I personally I like that extra touch that it gives without all, any really effort at all um, literally just throwing in an image and hey you've got nice reflections. Um, you don't even have to show the background. You can, you know, work your magic and make it so it's not even displayed. Um, and then, uh, you know, you get better reflections overall. One word of caution, uh, depending on the resolution of the image, and I mean, you're going to be working in general with like uh, 4K, 8K images, very, very high resolution, very large images, it is going to increase render times um, significantly. Uh, so, like if you select, let me go ahead and grab one of these here. So cloudy winter afternoon. This is a, uh, a 10K image, very high resolution, very large. It's an EXR image. Um, and overall, you know, it, it helps with the, um, the lighting quite a bit. And the reflections are fantastic. Um, and you get a nice moody scene here. Um, go ahead and show you another one here. Uh, let's do this guy right here. Very... Well, that's, I don't think that's the one I wanted to show you. Yep, it is the one. All right, so nice. There's orange reflections. You've got the sky, you know, darker sections that are being reflected off the edge, and then um, the lighter ones that are being reflected from the front. Um, a very nice, very solid, uh, you know, color um, and shading going on here. And the benefit is obvious there, but at the same time, I mean, I'm sitting at 47 samples, and there's still a ton of noise here. And it's taken, it took almost 30 seconds for it to, to just do a basic preview render here with a, you know, a ton of noise left over. Now you can counteract that with tricks and stuff, but just to kind of show you the difference between that and one without any um, added benefit. We're at 20 samples and there's, almost no noise and it's only been like eight seconds so it is going to increase render time significantly also if you're using a video card keep in, keep that in mind it is going to help fill up that uh, very limited VRAM buffer so uh, I think that's about it if you like the video please let me know I uh, considered doing these kind of videos in the past and uh, I, uh, I'm more than happy to do it again so let me know uh, thanks for watching you guys have a good day peace